CGI is everywhere in modern movies. All but the most low-budget films employ comprehensive use of visual effects for a number of reasons, from creating gorgeous far-flung worlds to fixing unexpected issues that arose during the shoot. And while bad or excessive CGI can certainly help ruin a movie, sometimes visual effects are deployed with such impressively subtle artistry that you don't even realise they're there. Well, nobody watched any of these 10 recent movies under the assumption that they were conceived entirely practically. Each, nevertheless, features a CGI moment that you almost certainly didn't notice. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 CGI moments in recent movies nobody noticed. Number 10. Nat and Yelena in the bar in Black Widow It's of course no secret that every single Marvel Cinematic Universe movie contains a ton of CGI in practically every scene, but you might be surprised at just how extensively VFX are used in even the most basic and practical of camera setups. When a VFX breakdown was released shortly after Black Widow hit screens, it revealed that even the scene where Natalia and Yelena hang out drinking in a bar required the use of blue screen technology. At a cursory glance, there's nothing about that scene which simply involves two people sitting down and talking, which necessitated CGI, most likely suggesting that this portion of the scene was a reshoot captured many months later. It's been stated before that the crew of every MCU movie captures clean background plates of all major camera setups, so if it's discovered that shots are missing or a scene isn't quite working in editing, pickups can be efficiently shot in front of a blue screen and composited in front of the plates. While it's easy to view this use of CGI as excessive, it's certainly a smart way to keep reshoot costs down by ensuring the crew doesn't need to revisit the original location or, worse still, rebuild a set that was destroyed after principal photography wrapped. And considering you almost certainly didn't notice it, do you really care all that much? Number 9. Tig Notaro replaces Chris D'Elia in Army of the Dead Zack Snyder faced a major technical hurdle during post-production of his zombie epic Army of the Dead, when numerous sexual misconduct allegations were made against cast member Chris D'Elia. Snyder decided to digitally remove D'Elia from the film and replace him with comedian Tig Notaro, an extremely challenging feat given that D'Elia was part of the main ensemble cast and typically filmed in shots with other actors. Snyder shot with Notaro against green screens for two weeks, with Ana de la Ruggiera being the only cast member she physically met on set, filming a total of two scenes with her. Delia was then erased from each shot and Nataro painstakingly inserted in his place. An intensely difficult process and yet one which is near enough seamless in the final film. Sure, if you know what to look for, there are a few moments where the lighting doesn't quite match 100%, but considering most general viewers didn't even know about the casting replacement, they'd likely have no idea they were looking at a hugely labour-intensive visual effect. Number 8. CGI Water in The Tragedy of Macbeth The Tragedy of Macbeth is an undeniably beautiful film powered by the combination of first-rate production design and cinematography, yet you'll probably be pretty shocked to see just how much of the film's style and atmosphere was dictated by mind-boggling, seamless visual effects. The production used countless matte paintings and set extensions to make the film's small soundstage set look considerably larger, while also employing CGI fog to obscure the set's limitations and imply a greater sense of scale. But we all know that water is one of the trickiest elements to replicate digitally, behind only fire, and this is where the tragedy of Macbeth truly comes into its own. During the scene where Macbeth sits in the apparition room and has a vision of the floor transforming into a bubbling cauldron of black liquid, the liquid is 100% CGI. While it looks like Denzel Washington is simply sitting in a set filled to ankle height with water, the actor is actually sitting considerably more comfortably in a totally dry set, with the liquid instead a brain-breakingly photoreal simulation. This is the sort of subtle, not showy effects work that deserves much greater recognition. Number 7. Duke Leto's Army on Caladan in Dune Dune quite rightly won the Best Visual Effects Oscar earlier this year, and though the film's VFX are spectacular from start to finish, there are few moments where they don't draw absolute attention to themselves. One scene where you might actually assume the bulk of the setup was filmed practically, however, is when Duke Leto Atreides is first tasked with presiding over Arrakis while assembled with his army on his home planet of Caladan. 
The eye-watering wide shot shows Duke Atreides standing on a large platformed area with several hundred officers behind him. It's certainly lush and expansive, but tangible enough that it could conceivably be filmed practically in an exotic location, given the film's large budget. Yet the scene is actually a mesmerizing trick. Almost all of the officers are digital replications, and only a small portion of the set is actually real. Furthermore, the temples and mountains in the background are also 100% digital. That the end result is photoreal enough to make you question whether it was shot in a practical location is why Dune absolutely deserved the Oscar. This is truly next level work. Number 6. Eddie at the Beach in Venom Let There Be Carnage the recent Venom sequel ends with Eddie Brock and Venom getting some well-earned R&R at the beach. While the sunset certainly looks suspiciously picturesque, you'd be forgiven for assuming that the scene was shot on a real beach and the sky was merely retouched during post-production. Incredibly though, the entire beach is fake, with Hardy actually sitting on a small patch of sand on a soundstage in front of a blue screen. In fact, because so much of the shot was replaced in post, the microphone used to capture Hardy's dialogue didn't even need to be concealed from the camera view, as it was simply painted out by the film's VFX artists. Though 98% of the film's CGI moments draw absolute attention to themselves, this is actually pretty clever and shows the benefit of hiring a VFX-savvy filmmaker like Andy Serkis to get the job done. Number 5. The Sherman Fields Candyman in Candyman it's certainly no secret that the new Candyman sequel uses CGI to de-age original Candyman star Tony Todd in its delirious climax. But did you know there's actually a 100% digital character hidden in plain sight throughout the film? Early on, we're told about the tragic tale of Sherman Fields, a hook-handed black man who was shot by racist police officers decades ago. And several times throughout the film, we see him appear as a version of the vengeful Candyman. While it simply seems that actor Hargrove was kitted out in grotesque makeup effects to perform these scenes, that's not quite the case. Though Hargrove did indeed perform all of the scenes himself, during post-production, director Nia da Costa decided that the prosthetic facial scarring effects didn't quite look good enough. And so VFX house Luma Pictures was charged with replacing Hargrove with a total digital recreation from scratch, using crime scene photography to create a more visceral facial wound. Yet because because this decision was made in post, no movement data for Hargrove had been captured during principal photography, making the process considerably more difficult. But the end result is extremely difficult to spot, in large part thanks to smart use of dim lighting to conceal the obvious tells of a digital human face. Number 4. Everything but the boat in Death on the Nile Anyone with even a rudimentary understanding of VFX will likely be aware that Death on the Nile wasn't actually filmed on the River Nile. It was in fact predominantly shot on sound stages in London, with the footage then composited into background plates, which were shot in Egypt by the film's second unit crew. And while many noted how phony the film's Egyptian exteriors looked, you might be surprised to learn just how much CGI was actually employed to place the focal cruise ship, the SS Karnak, on the Nile. You probably assumed that the London soundstage contained a water tank and some Egyptian scenery, and yet the sound stages are shockingly bare for a $90 million movie. Some sequences were quite literally filmed in what appears to be a large gravel backlot outside the studio, with every piece of the Egyptian locale either a background plate or a CGI element created from scratch. The film's effects are certainly far from perfect, but it's nevertheless shocking just how artificial it all is. Number 3. Piccadilly Circus in Last Night in Soho Edgar Wright is an extremely shrewd filmmaker where visual effects are concerned, yet when it came to recreating 1960s London for his most recent film Last Night in Soho, it was reasonable to assume that he would simply alter shots of modern day London to resemble their past. While that's largely true during the scene set in Soho itself, the sequence where Jack drives Sandy around Piccadilly Circus is actually a feat of low-key VFX genius. Though you probably assumed Edgar Wright simply shot the scene in Piccadilly Circus for real and then had the shot edited to resemble its 60s self, the car ride was actually shot at another location altogether. From the VFX breakdown, it's clear that the car was filmed riding along a closed street slash track and then cleverly composited into a 100% CGI recreation of 60s Piccadilly Circus. Because the lighting between the raw footage of the car and the VFX shot match up pretty much perfectly, it looks supremely photorealistic. Number 2. Paloma's High Heels in No Time to Die 
One of No Time To Die's most memorable sequences involves the introduction of ass-kicking CIA agent Paloma, who promptly takes down a fleet of goons while wearing a pair of precarious high heels. As a testament to the art of subtle CGI, Ana de Armas actually wore trainers while filming this scene, and the film's VFX artist then replaced them with high heels, presumably for the sake of both practicality and safety. Because the heels would fundamentally change the actress's posture, her legs also had to be digitally altered to ensure the effect was totally convincing. And considering not a single living soul picked up on this until the incredible VFX breakdown was released, it's most certainly a job well done. Number 1. The Dog-Shaped Shadow in The Power of the Dog Jane Campion's Oscar-winning western The Power of the Dog uses way more CGI than you'd ever guess simply from looking at it. From the mostly digital animals to the extended sets and CGI buildings, it's a testament to how subtle effects can add so much presence and atmosphere to a film. One of its most memorable scenes involves Phil and Peter staring at what appears to be the shadow of a barking dog in the hills near his ranch. While you might assume that a lower-budget art house film simply location scouted a hilltop that resembled the profile of a barking dog at a squint, it was ultimately less hassle to just rely on VFX to create the precise visual that director Jane Campion wanted. In post-production, the entire topography of the hills was changed, with new lighting and shadows layered on top to both create the dog silhouette and make it blend believably into the originally shot material. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any that we missed, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there at WhatCulture. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with WhatCulture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.